Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am I am not a programmer. Maybe you can think me as a odd man here. I'm a physics teacher. But I love to try and experiment with different things which can make teaching learning process in my class a little more interesting to my students. Uh, how many of you are science students here? Yeah. Okay. Computer science. Okay. Uh, I, I was talking about uh, basic science, physics, chemistry, <laughs> math, bio. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so when you were in your, your high school days, higher secondary days, okay, which was the most difficult subject you had or which subject you felt was most difficult and most boring and most dull? Physics. Physics, right? That is, that is the general understanding about that subject. Now let's, let's try and understand the reason behind this. Maybe the real problem is with teachers like us. Uh, how do we teach physics? Consider a body, right? And then we write so many questions. Okay, let there be a force, constant force acting on the body. Let the body be accelerate and have this much velocity. In teacher's conceptual model, body may be somewhere here and student will be searching it somewhere else. So conveying the real conceptual model is a, a real difficult thing. But what would you prefer? Having a boring physics class at 2.30 in the afternoon or having a two hour session in your favorite cinema theater watching your favorite movie? What would you prefer? One hour boring physics session or a, or a two hours or three hours Hindi movie or English movie? Movie. Movie, definitely, right? And if we decide to have a small exam or test after one hour physics class and after that two hours movie session, where do you think your performance will be better? After where? After the movie, right? If I ask you any question, you'll be able to answer all those questions. You'll be able to narrate the entire story from the beginning till the end, right? But if we decide to have a test after the physics class, what will be our performance there? Okay, the question that I want you to focus at is, why it is so difficult to understand things in a science class and why it is so very easy and interesting in a, in a cinema theater? Maybe if we can understand that, we can implement those things here in a classroom and make this learning activity interesting as well. And what would be the real difference? What would be the real difference in a in a movie and a theory class in school? Here, yeah. yeah, cinema is a story. Okay, and there is no story here. Abstract. Yeah. Visual, more visual. Okay. So if we, yeah, if we, if we, but why that fun is missing from from learning something? Maybe one of the reason is that in a in a movie or in a cinema we are able to relate ourselves with whatever is happening there. You don't find that is totally strange. You find that that is our own world. But in a physics class, everything is not related to our real life. Maybe if we start in the beginning, like we, we teach uh, kinematics, we teach Newton's laws of motion, we derive so many things. Okay, we start from initial velocity and then finally derive Newton's second law of motion, that is force equals mass into acceleration. But when we go home, in the end, where do we use these equations? Do we find any use of these equations in our real life? And the answer is no. And this brain is a brilliant machine. Brain is a brilliant design. If our brain feels that something is useless, it will not store that garbage here. Then you will have to override it. Then you will have to pseudo it, right? Bahad, 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 mug up. And then your brain will be able to remember those things. Uh, what kind of things you remember from your, from your childhood days? What kind of things you remember very easily? Very interesting thing, something which is which is happy, which is very happiest thing, something which is very extremely sad and painful. All such things we remember. We remember all important things. And what are all important things? The things which our brain feels that are really important, those are automatically stored. But that doesn't happen here in a science class. We fail to relate ourselves with what we study in a scientific science classroom. So what I did is I, I tried some experiments since last two, three years. I got opportunity to, to be here for Python Singapore last year. And since then I started exploring use of Python in my own classroom. Let's look at uh, some of the basic problems in a science classroom. The biggest problem everywhere is passive learning. Uh, we learn scientific concepts without having... Is that problem? Is it the problem here? Okay, let's ignore that. Uh, so where I was? Okay, 
we learn so many scientific concepts without having basic understanding of mathematics trigonometry calculus and that's why these these subjects are really very difficult we study so many concepts which are very difficult to see in real life for example we teach ac and dc alternating current and direct current but if i really ask you what exactly is the difference between ac and dc what happens in that wire what happens in a conductor when ac is flowing through it or when dc is flowing through it students are not able to understand that in fact teachers are not able to explain it properly so real learning is missing and what is the end result because of these problems of theory theory and only theory mug up reproduce and get good marks in the exam no scope for uh, learning by doing no scope for learning by exploring and experimenting what is the end result students think that science is very boring dull difficult subject <coughs> science is something which is only for smart students and we end up with people or students uh, whose imaginations are unmoved by saturn's beautiful rings people who take gravitation for granted and don't feel it as if it is something amazing so i have always wished if i could if i could take my entire lab to the classroom and demonstrate each and everything to the students before i begin to teach any concept try and show them what it is and then go to the technical details then go to the technically boring mathematical equations and that would be real fun present them with a better visual models using some simulation techniques so that they can understand this this in a better way and this problem is partially solved by python and my pocket science lab which is powered by python it's a small computer interface maybe a little later i'll show you what exactly it is so python could help me to take my lab to the classroom and demonstrate so many things in a classroom but the question is why python now if you think from my side for a for a physics teacher generally very rarely you'll find a person who can code a science teacher who can also code so for people without having any programming background python is the easiest choice because it is very simple to understand you need not worry about so many technical details it has inbuilt libraries for everything that you want to do you need to know just what exactly you want to have so it's very simple yet powerful and it has special features for scientific computing handling vectors matrices performing fourier transforms making graphs and creating 3d visuals so i consider python has a potential to change the way we teach and the way we learn equations in physics and math they always look very dull and boring and if you fail to understand the beauty behind those equations you can't appreciate these kind of concepts let's take for example what do you understand by this this equation function of x equals sin of 3x i think from the point of view of a higher secondary student so for him it is just math right and he will have to just by heart it right mug it up okay but if you could understand what exactly that x does there what is the role that sin plays there if you can plot a real time graph for this then it will be little interesting in the second equation i have just added one more x there before sin x into sin of 3x so that's actually the damping factor so in theory we just write the equations and we explain right and this actually doesn't help how about writing a very simple python code and plotting these real graphs for example here okay if i use the first function y equals sin 3x you will get a simple sin wave right give opportunity to children to play with these numbers okay instead of sin ask them to try with cos ask them to try with tan and get the results and see how these functions look like see how these equations look like okay the second equation when we add just extra x there you have a different kind of curve so students can actually appreciate how these things are working here right and python code is not that difficult it's it's really really very easy okay let me just run that right it's it's actually a three four line code and you get a beautiful graph there is there is a very small simple function working for this you need not be a programmer even 
in one day you will be able to do all these things right that plot x comma y and show that just gives you that popped up graph there is one more example maybe let's try okay let's add that damping factor there right and this is the result so a very simple python course and things work right children can play with these things they can understand the real mathematics behind it and they will also get interested in coding because with with two lines of code they are able to do some magic right okay not only graphs in fact python can be used to create 3d visual graphics and make things more interesting okay one more story almost everywhere in higher level mathematics we use exponential equations e raised to something power of e and that is very complicated to understand right okay so how about just using a small code and and plotting a graph for this maybe you can see uh, this is the result right the same equation y sin x and exponential factor is there and that gives a damping sine wave so this is how one can make things little more interesting and for simple dynamics while studying collisions while studying oscillations of springs damping one can use a very simple code and create 3d visuals and make the class little more interesting for small kids you need not worry about the code just show them the simulations and they'll be interested they'll be inspired to learn something from computing also let's see if this this code works yeah about 10 line code and we have a very interesting visual of a bouncing ball then you can introduce concepts of elasticity concepts of uh, coefficient of restitution okay if if coefficient of restitution is exactly 1 ball will bounce back to the same level and if there is energy loss then its height will go on decreasing and it will be damping maybe in the end i'll i'll show you some real experiments also not only virtual things Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Xpies. It's a it's a Python powered pocket science lab. This this small little kit which I am using here. This has a potential to replace many equipments in a physics lab. Typically, in a science lab, what do we need? We need a digital storage oscilloscope. We need a function generator which can generate a sine wave, a square wave. We need amplifiers. We need power supplies. We need digital counters. We need ammeter, voltmeter. right so we need all those devices and we do experiments only in the laboratory of school and these kind of instruments are not accessible to students to try and explore at home so with that objective of providing very low cost and affordable personal laboratory to students we came up with this project xpies it's from nuclear science center new delhi it's a open source software and hardware framework uh, even circuit schematics and everything is open So it's a computer interface that can convert your laptop or your PC or your mobile phone into a full-fledged physics electronics lab, and with very small locally available components, you can do hundreds of experiments. There is a built-in sine generator. We have an oscilloscope. And it's USB powered. Uh, recently, uh, one student has developed Android app, so you can actually interface it with your mobile phone, and it has really become a pocket science lab. Uh, let me just flash these things. uh 12 bit resolution we have a uh, ready made python gui for about 50 new experiments okay let's talk about some some amazing experiments that can be done using python maybe before that i'll just show you a very simple experiment to demonstrate the power of this device we let's use the ready made gui for that so it will give us a clear idea about what this device is okay this is the main user interface for pocket science lab it's a full fledged digital storage oscilloscope 
you have all the functionalities which are there in a very costly device okay so you can see one one signal coming up there i have just connected one small wire to one channel of this device right there is no power supply connected to that channel but still we are getting some signal let me just change the time based setting of this so that we can have more waves in the screen right and i'll just hold this wire in my hand can you see something happening there right the amplitude of the signal is increased and that is ac voltage that we are getting right now just to increase the curiosity of students we can ask questions from where we are getting this electricity i have not connected anything there it's just a piece of wire and that is giving voltage and that voltage is being measured and plotted here in real time we are actually able to use a very small python code and take about 100 readings in a second 400 readings in a second and plot it in real time that's the power of python so what exactly is happening here the moment i touch this wire my body is acting like an antenna and all these electricity cables which are here they are radiating electricity right and we are actually getting this electricity now if you know what is the frequency of ac in singapore we'll be able to find that it should be 50 years right okay i'll just drag this channel to fit and here you'll get that frequency maybe if i hold it it will give us a steady reading let's say it's 49.9 or 50 hertz right so a very simple python code is running behind this so the idea is give opportunity to students to do something on their own have real interaction with the concepts with the with the things which are happening and that way learning can be made fun another experiment of couple pendula right if you just want to have a real uh, proprietary closed setup for this it's very costly and this can be made with just just two small dc motors and a homemade pendulum okay again okay understanding concepts of phase one phase ac two phase ac three phase ac that is very complicated for students and also for teachers but with this we can easily show when the waves are in phase when they go out of phase by plotting them in real time you can study concepts of resonance like this we did so many experiments using this python uh, power pocket science lab uh, we used ultrasonic position sensors so when you when you are teaching motion graphs like velocity time graph acceleration time graph position time graph instead of just showing them on the board how about having a moving vehicle detecting its position measuring its velocity and plotting that in real time so you can just use one ultrasonic sensor fetch the data using this pocket science lab and plot it in real time you can plot vt graph acceleration time graph and also position time graph this is one more experiment we just did it with linear air track you can get those graphs you can also plot lissajous figures which has a very complicated math behind it but just take python code and how many books to add so when i was trying this with with sine waves i just used sine waves which are uh, available here from this function generator and plotted those lissajous figures one of my student just thought why only use sine waves let's try with square waves and one day he tried square waves which are available here okay and he could get these beautiful patterns right again a two line code fetch the data using capture function which are which is available for xpies and plot it so you can you can have beautiful patterns which can be generated just by changing frequencies of two orthogonal waves one more thing that can be demonstrated we have a sine wave generator here i'll just connect this sine wave to one channel i'll fetch that data and plot it in real time uh you can see the code is very very simple right you can just import the python library for this device and just one function capture plot and show maybe let's do that okay because the control is with different device disturb it
okay so what i have done here is i have connected one wire from a source of sine wave from a sine wave generator to the channel right and the device is reading the data and plotting it in real time one can just one can just click on channel 1 and fit the data and measure the frequency okay maybe for last 2 3 minutes i'll show one more very interesting experiment like we study interference of sound when two sound waves travel together they superpose and if there is a frequency difference between them we get beeps right amplitude of sound increases decreases increases decreases that is that is interference of sound called phenomenon of beeps something like a uh, sound of ambulance right with increases and decreases that is very difficult to demonstrate because the maximum number of beats that human ear can detect is 10 if it is more than 20 30 then we will not be able to see the difference right but here because we have a power of measuring data uh, recording data uh, for a time interval of few microseconds it's very easy to do it one can do it with a ready made code or we can use a ready made gui for this okay there is a ready made gui available everything is written in python you see interference of sound somewhere yeah it's here okay a very simple experiment so what i'll do is i'll drive this piezo buzzers there are two piezo buzzers here they are connected to a source of square wave generator square wave and there is the inbuilt mic here so what mic will do it will convert sound wave into electrical signal and that we can plot on the screen okay before we do this let's test this buzzers right okay just a second let's try it in a different way I just made a mistake because to just demonstrate the previous case I have actually connected this sine wave there so that was giving me the output of sine wave now let's connect output of mic here and run that program okay let's test this okay it's a it's a sound of about 3500 hertz right let's bring it close to the mic and you will be able to see that amplitude is increasing right okay fluctuations are because of the system is not that stable right but otherwise the signal is almost constant amplitude is almost constant okay let's try the other one also okay this is also working let's bring it close to the mic and you get a steady signal there now what i'll do is okay we can experience that sound it's not shaky it's it's continuous right it's uniform but now when i run both these things together they have a small difference in their frequency about 500 hertz one is 3500 and the other is 3600 you can see the data that can be adjusted so about 100 hertz is the difference and because difference in frequency is 100 hertz that amplitude should change 100 times in a second let's see what happens right one can actually see the formation of beats you see that pattern is changing there amplitude increases decreases increases decreases and here one can introduce the concept of waves being in phase and waves going out of phase when the waves are in phase they get added up amplitude increases when the waves are out of phase one coming like this and the other coming like this crest falling on the trough they destroy each other so amplitude decreases and because the frequencies are constant they go in phase and out of phase periodically and result is this pattern
see maybe two more slides and then i'll conclude okay so and uh, what i have tried to demonstrate is physics can be made interesting if we could show real things happening in the real world instead of just demonstrating everything on board using chalk and talk method and it will be very interesting to give opportunity to children to learn everything by themselves and have a concept of flipped classroom like a classwork should become homework and homework should become classwork students should do everything at home on their own and only for doubts they should come to the teacher so when that flipped thing works i think we'll be having a real understanding of the concepts and python definitely has that potential to change the way we teach and the way we learn as i have said earlier okay thank you for your patient listening thank you very much thank you very much if anybody has any any question Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, let me share you one simple story. Uh, I was teaching, I was having some sessions to high school students, not my students directly, and they were from uh, Marathi and Kannada medium, not English. So they have a unique difficulty in India. Up to tenth standard, they learn everything in their own language, and when they go to eleventh standard in science, everything is in English. So first problem is understanding English, and second problem is understanding science. So it's it's extremely difficult for them. So what I did, I used this device and I could demonstrate some experiments without using any kind of technical word. So I did not tell them that I am I am actually teaching them electromagnetic induction. I said let's just have fun. We used a small DC motor and a neodymium magnet and some pickup coils, right? And we could take the data and plot it here on the screen. And I just gave those kits to those students for a week, and after that we had interaction. Children played with that apparatus. and then i started asking them questions okay what happens okay if you if you increase the speed of the rotating magnet they said that wave amplitude of the wave increases then i asked them okay if you bring that uh, that coil pick up coil very close to the magnet what happens take it away from the magnet what happens okay when you turn the coil like this what happens and they were ready with all the answers only thing that i had to do was introduce them with the technical terms right they were ready with their understanding of a uh, fundamental laws in electricity faraday's laws like rate of change of magnetic flux that induces the voltage so that actually gives them real kind of experience and they need not have to mug up they will have to just get familiar with the technical terms and then things will be easy as well as this one you got to do you got to be responsible for going with any school or all students or just this more talented ones No, no. It it actually works with uh, uh, average group of students. Okay, more talented one students, they they actually ignore these things. They feel that we don't need any any extra support. We can do everything on their own, right? But those average students, which are little uh, little, you can say low in the exams. Okay, for them, they found it very interesting. Yeah. Um, from my experience, what I find is uh, that students have a lot of of difficulties. Linking things like the oscilloscope graph, whatever. Yeah. Actually, what's really happening? Even if they do the experiment themselves, mm. they measure the graph, get the data, mm. they have no idea what it means. Mm. That's why yeah. you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the real difficulty. So in fact, we can just we always start with teaching them what a graph says. Right? You need to you need to talk to the graphs first. If you want to understand anything in physics, you need to understand those graphs. Right? And that is the real difficulty almost everywhere. In fact, I also feel that. If you give some data, students will in fact have a problem in taking scale on the different uh, uh, axes. Any other question? Okay, uh, I'll conclude then. Thank you very much.